Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. Your hosts today are me, I'm Jason. And I'm Travis, regular co-hosts. We connect with all sorts of different people, TOs, uh, competitive players, and just um, anyone else that has something interesting to say that they message us and convince us to talk about on an episode. Yeah, we do like making the world a little bit smaller, one hobbyist at a time. We do have a Discord and a Patreon, which is definitely some stuff that you should check out if you enjoy our content. And if you do enjoy this podcast, make sure to share it with your friends who play Kill Team, because the more the merrier. We've got a Patreon and a Discord that you are welcome to join and support if you love our content, um, as well as leave five-star reviews so it's easier for others to find us. Thank you for your support. Here's the episode. Today's episode, I'm coming at you live on this wonderful Monday late morning, um, stitching together some of the interviews that I did at Adepticon. Kicking it off through the eyes of a new player, Isaac, local to my scene in Minnesota, um, just played in the pods. And here we go. Well, hello, everyone. I'm here with Isaac, uh, one of the locals from my group that is also here at Adepticon. Welcome. Hello. Um, Isaac, you played in the pods yesterday. Yeah, I did. I was running uh, Compendium Drakari, five Kabbalates, five witches. How'd you feel about it? Uh, it was a really good time. Uh, I still don't think there's like that much of a ch- chance of winning with Compendium teams, apart from maybe Custodes. Uh, but... Drakari are really fun. It makes the dice really spiky, and it's a really good time. Uh, two out of four people said I was the most fun match they had this weekend, so I would say I more or less swept the tournament. I, th- I think you actually, there, we had an award for that at the last Renegade, and you got that? We did. Yeah, yeah. I won uh, Best Sport, and I will be sweating for that every year at Renegade going forward. Amazing. Wouldn't the scene be a better place if everyone was just striving for best sport? Anyways, this next chat is a conversation with a couple of my teammates, Mike and Lee, from uh, Daloon Lads, freshly put together team, uh, coming out of Minnesota uh, before round one even begins. We're here, we're here at Adepticon. We're yeah. doing it live. Uh, Lee over here and Mike. Uh, what are you guys playing? I'm playing Cash again. I'm playing as tutorial agents. I uh, was debating Phobos, but I decided that agents overall just because I think Phobos have a pretty uh, uphill battle that uh, I don't know if I'm good enough to play. Jason, I think, is. But. <laughs> I, had, I had zero debate. I was uh, I was going to play Castrican. I have always played Castrican. <laughs> that is all there is and that is all there will ever be. That's the best part about <laughs> just faction specialization is uh, you can just skip all of the decision paralysis on choosing your faction. Yeah. That's sweet too, because I picked them up when they sucked, and now they uh, they've been just consistently buffed <laughs> to the point where I was good with them when they were bad, and now they're good, <laughs> and I'm still good, I think. <laughs> I, um, for the last couple of weeks on our stats show, the Cavs are going to have been pretty consistently doing bad, and I was like, I, I think tanking. we're going to see a spike. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to see a bump this weekend. Yeah. And I've got a certain someone in mind, Mike here. I think he's going to do well. They, uh, I, I feel like my fellow Castrican players are tankers. They're just, they're just throwing the win rate, so we keep our buffs. I'm open for some executorial action. I feel like I'm trying to. My, my goal is just to get in the top half. That's, that's all I'm aiming for. First big tournament ever. So, got my, all my, all my incinerary supports with me. <laughs> ready, ready, what did ready you, to rock? What did you bring? You're doing, you're um, doing your six in cursors. Only in cursors. Yeah, oh, hell I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm committing to it. Is that is that all that's in the box? Why well, I've got my <laughs> intercessors as well. Just I don't know. I brought but nothing. Them along nothing for the else ride. for Phobos. Yeah, nothing. You're else committed for to the bit. I mean, like the the, the models <laughs> I made are specifically um, ambiguous, so they could be multiple people. Yeah. Um. So like this guy, if he was an infiltrator, would be my veteran. This guy's always the sniper dude. Um. You know. Yeah. I'm not going to use a medic. Uh, the only good space marine is a scoring space marine. Yeah. You don't want to hide hide and survive and not score. So you're not my, taking the mine layer at all? Um, I actually am taking the mine layer because he's an incursor. He's allowed. Yeah. Um, so I, one of the things that I did think of, and I wonder, so like that table is probably a better example. And at that table, um, that, that Octarius in the middle, it's like you... Pretty much like the way to know where people would stage their threats is like if I was playing recover item right now, where would I put the item? And then that's where people are going to put their VIP threats. So like the the vet guard demo mine is going there. 
and like you know stuff like yeah. that like the gnarl scar from Belgor is going to go there so if you just like run up there and put a mine there and then if they like walk into there they're going to blow up and like that'll apply to you too yeah, i know I, and it's my my strategy is just up the board with the mine layer on open and put it on a corner of an octarius building because it effectively turns off a lane like if this was faced the other way and i put the mine on the inside of the wall right there like you can't go anywhere near this building where I can't shoot you. Yes. By the end of day one, we had four undefeated players, Hyrotech, Felgor Ravagers, Vetguard, and Gellerpox, all great players that you've probably heard about before. Um, Shane from Command Point, Adrian Martin, Leander Garrett, and Orion Wilfong. The uh, more specific stats are available on BCP, and I can throw that in the show notes. I missed the top cut by a little bit weaker strength of schedule. Um... Still very happy with a 3-1 performance with the pure Incursor build. I had to try it out. Definitely satisfied with the result. The next day after the first round, I grabbed a a quick chat with Janice, who was playing Felgor Ravagers in the top pod. Here's the conversation. Uh, And I'm here with Janice. This was the end of round five. Yes. Um, And you've only lost against Shane. Yeah, I've only lost to Shane's Hyrotech. In Into the Dark, twice. <laughs> Both were Into the Dark? Yes. Were, what, uh, this one was loot, right? Yeah, this one was loot, and the first in uh, the open uh, tournament, it was uh, against uh, Secure. Yeah, Secure. At least there's a little variety there. A little bit, but what sucked today for me is that playing loot, I had to have three goats just stand around and really do nothing, where he could... Shane had the advantage there with the plasma sites being able to do his mission action. The loot bugs and they yeah. fly. So, but we still tied on primary, but he was able to stifle my secondaries pretty badly today. I probably shouldn't have taken uh, Relentless Aggression, uh, this faction attack op three. Is that the one where you need to park near people? Yeah, you need to be near people. Yeah. So I probably shouldn't have taken that one. So it is what it is. <laughs> what would you swap it up for? Uh, I would have probably swapped it out for Headhunter. Okay. And I did take out his Cryptek on turn two. Did you do that both games? No, I only did that today. But I, I was thinking hard about it when I was selecting my tech ops because I know Shane plays aggressive with his Cryptek. And I, had, I took the goat with the plasma pistol. I had a crack grenade. And I figured, you know, I could probably whittle him down to yeah. at least get the, at least one point for Headhunter. And I opted, no, I'll, I'll try to do the safe bet and go for my faction tech op, which is pretty easy to score, but but didn't. Did you get any points for it? Uh, well, I did, didn't take, no, for, for uh, uh, aggression, no, I didn't get any points for it. The only uh, tech op I was able to score one point on was uh, eliminate guard. But Shane constantly, uh, when I would call a, who's my eliminate guard target if he had initiative would immediately like run him as far as he could away from anybody yeah. and since i only have pistols i really can't <laughs> yeah you <laughs> can't get chase there. him down after that um how's the overall adepticon's experience felt this year for you it's felt great uh i've had a lot of good opponents a lot of very tough opponents i don't think i've had an easy match the entire weekend uh i went up against some of the rail splitters yeah. twice uh Brett and uh, uh, mind blanking on his name, the guy that plays Hyrotech. Yeah, him. <laughs> uh, is he? He's that guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> but yeah, I played him uh, last game on in the pods, and one that that's the game that won me on the pods. Uh, so yeah, I've had tough games all weekend. So it's been a good it's been a good experience. Yeah. There's so some, there's a definitely some the player field has leveled up since last year. It definitely has. So you, yeah, you, don't, you went 4-0 in the pods. Yes. Um, you're, uh, what is this, 4-1 and one right now? Uh, no, I'm 5-2 and two right now. Oh, I'm 3-1 I'm and one on day one, which got me into the top eight. Yeah. Because of my, my strength of schedule and score. And then I'm 0-1 uh, oh for today. But today is three rounds and yeah. winner take all. <laughs> so I'm fighting for third place right now. <laughs> what's, uh, what's in your pod, what's the scariest matchup for you? of them. <laughs> uh, probably the one that I would probably be most afraid of, because thinking about it this morning, 
I don't want to go against Geller Pox because I think Geller Pox have a really strong play into Felgor. Well, yeah, the, the injury aura is brutal. Yeah. Those. Uh, my, uh, my number two was Hyrotech because of Nanomine being able to, to stifle movement and and well, he does have a lot of stun, but it was more worrying about Into the Dark with the splash yeah. weaponry and the equipment that makes it a three-inch splash. So I can't yeah. have people near each other. So that was probably my second scariest match or thought of who to play. My next would be the Felgor Mirror match with with Adrian. I was kind of assuming that might have been something you were going to say. Because from talking to other people, uh, Jimmy Kelly and uh, and Ryan, that the mirror match for Felgor is just awful to play. And it's just kind of an ex- experience I don't want to deal with. <laughs> yep, that's super valid. Yeah, I was hoping to come in to fight either Guard or... Gene Steeler Cult as my first because I think that would have probably gone better for me. Yep, I think so too. So, or Breachers. Breachers is the other one. Oh, there is the, Breachers in there. Yeah, that's what uh, Adrian's playing right now. How do you I think, feel against Vetguard? I think it's going to be a tough fight, mostly because of the two people that are playing them are really good players. Yeah. I think Felbor could do very well into them, but. Uh, given that it's Leander and Ryan from Command Point, I think it would be a tough match. But yeah. I think I would have been better off with them than playing against Hyrotech. Yeah. Just because, especially when you kill a guy, he stays dead. He doesn't come back <laughs> in a turn with a resurrection <laughs> or reanimation. <laughs> um, what did you think about the terrain here? Uh, the t- I mixed emotions on, on it. Uh, some of the boards were a little open, but I know they wanted them to be a little more shooter-friendly because of melee being so powerful right now. Yeah, like the feedback from Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big thing, was the feedback from Worlds. Uh, and I think Ben did a good job with the, the terrain layout. I mean, in the open boards that I played, I didn't have too much of a problem keeping my my people concealed. Yeah. Uh, but I know some people that, I guess don't know obscuring rules that well or uh, concealment rules that well don't uh, didn't take well to it <laughs> yeah but yeah. for the veteran for the definite veteran players the be being up to your players they knew how to work around the terrain it just gave us a little bit more work to deal with yeah I think the craziest one is that like that x-shaped Octarius yeah uh, short edge deployment yeah that one's the worst in that my was, opinion uh, it's totally bonkers I didn't play on it but I saw I looked at it a few times going oh my god this is gonna kill people yeah I was gonna, I was, I was gonna ask if you so you haven't played on that uh, besides no. in the pods did you uh, play that one in the pods no I didn't play it at all at this all this weekend yeah okay yeah, I haven't done short deployment on any anything this weekend, so everything has been long edge deployment for me. I did one game on the short edge X, and that was uh, my all incursors versus the scouts, and that was very scary to impl- deploy all and engage. Yeah. Um, but it was like very scary for him to also. Right. Uh, and then just like obscuring. Plus, like he didn't have as many engage orders as me, right. so I was able to like find more angles and get more shots. Um, so I, I squeaked it out. But that was a uh, that was a very nerve wracking game. Yeah. So what was your scariest game this weekend? Um, I was against Leander for sure. Oh yeah. Because uh, I played against his vet guard. That makes sense. And it like I was just like ah uh, yeah I've, I've tried this before and I just lose and accept that like I didn't come here to win the whole thing. Right. Um and then it was actually way closer than I was expecting. Yeah. Where um like my alpha strike was like going off. I was like killing all his gunners like through the medic and everything. Uh, the demo mine didn't kill anyone until melee came around. Oh wow. Because what really got me was once he just started like charging and fighting it was like an incursor did like three or zero damage in melee yeah. and it took five and that happened like three times in a row and he just like died to melee against guardsmen <laughs> um and that happened a couple times and it was really just like leaning into the dice which isn't the best strategy and then they didn't pan out right um so it was it was a closer match than i would have expected but it was absolutely insane because the shooter at the beginning was yeah. just like bonkers yeah yeah, Liam, or Leander, well, Liam, too, even though he didn't make top eight. Both are people that I didn't want to go up against this weekend. Yeah. I mean, they're teammates, so I don't want to bump my own teammates out of something. Yep. But just, I've played them numerous times in local events, 
and they're they're hard to they're hard to beat. Yeah. So I did have a play this weekend I want to talk about that I, yeah. I did enjoy. I was up against Casterkin, and guy dropped the mine in the center of of two two of the buildings. Yeah. On the map. So if I went between there, uh, I was going to set off the mine. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I have the Toxhorn, who has barely any health left. And this is the start, at the end of uh, turning point two. So beginning at turning point three in the strat phase, I did uh, call the attack. That's the free dash in the strategy phase. Yeah, the free dash in the strategy phase. Moved the Toxhorn onto the onto the mine, blew it up and blew up the guy, the mine layer at the same time, which because it's not in his activation the goat's friends and doesn't go off the board <laughs> so that was kind of my favorite play of the weekend <laughs> yeah, that's yep, that's a very good workaround to that mine <laughs> it's like, I got a guy that's going to die anyway and I'll just frenzy him and then get some yeah, I hadn't out even of him. thought about that because if, if, if he did trigger it in his own activation he, he would, would he just would, die he would die at the end of his activation but since the call the attack is a freebie dash it's not in his activation he he lives on on frenzy yeah that's, <laughs> yep that's bonkers it's a fun fun little trick that that is cool for any Felgor players out there that are Don't trying to figure out how to deal with that yeah <laughs> Was there any, like, other, like, auto-take-plays combos that you would do every time? Uh, War Paint. <laughs> yeah, War Paint is very good. Yeah, War Paint's going to probably get smacked here pretty hard at some point. Yep, I would be very surprised if it <laughs> stayed how it was through the next Davis Slate. Uh, crack Grenade, not necessarily on the, uh, uh, Gnarl Fisto. Scar. Yeah, Gnarl Scar. One. Yep. I call him Fisto, but Fisto. you know, <laughs> valid. But I, uh, I put him, put it on uh, on the uh, flux spray a few times. No, not the flux spray. The it's mangler. The three, uh, or yeah, not the mangler. Mangler's the blind one. No, the uh, flux spray's the three swords. Yeah, three swords. Uh, vandal. I put vandal. It on the vandal. <laughs> the big club guy. Yeah. Okay. And moving him up. Because he otherwise doesn't have a shooting attack. No, he doesn't have a shooting attack otherwise. So just move him up and and throw it. Because uh, Spread the when, threats out a when I used this was against guard equivalent uh, like Eldar, and uh, with the uh, uh, with the with Fisto, I would do the auto pistol attack because it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good, and because if I do the grenade, if I would did the grenade and fight, I typically blew up the guy before I could even get a chance to do anything, and it's like, oh, now I'm just standing here. Yeah, with this awkward, like, overkill situation. Yeah. That's... With the, that. with the pistol, it was better because I could usually get at least one one or two hits go through, like a crit, mm-hmm. and that's enough to, to kill an elf with just, a, with just a hit then. Yeah. Or if I did it the other way around and punched a guy, uh... And it was an elf. I could potentially shoot them with uh, with uh, with a handgun. Yeah, piss now, somebody else. Uh, I know the worst ploy of Felgor is pelting firepower, but I did get a use out of it this weekend. When in the pods, when I played against the Hyrotech, uh, I took it and was going pelting firepower on his crypt tech, and then had the whip guy go in and hit hit him with the whip That's like four hitting times. on twos, and that ends up being, uh, like, five, it, six? It, when I hit him with it, it was uh, four, five. So I hit, I had got two two tokens on him from holding, holding firepower. So, yeah, he was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, yeah. I guess I die. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a crazy combo. Um, did you do much other shooting throughout that tournament to compensate for any crazy terrain or anything? Or was... uh, I tended to do not a lot of shooting. Uh, it was kind of desperation shots for the most part, except in that one instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did, I was able to do enough chip damage when I needed to with some people to to uh, get some some hits on people so I could do insta-kills with, a, with the first hit on melee. Yeah. Uh, the auto-take ploys that I was tending to run was uh, ambush and reckless determination, which is the save... The freebie save one? Oh, that's the freebie save one. I think so. 
I, I could was be getting expecting the, uh, the the weird version of Relentless. I've used it a few times, but given that I went up against a lot of shooting factions this weekend, the saves are better. The saves are better, especially if you're in cover. You get two save, two re- retains as opposed to the one. Yeah, and that really stifled a few people, especially with running that and having the gong nearby. That way, uh, the uh, crit damage doesn't go through. And then you can't kill them in shooting. Yeah, then you can't kill them in shooting. And being able to have the saves uh, just boosts their their survivability by (laughs) threefold. Yeah. So, yeah, two auto saves is very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, But, yeah, I I did use the... Uh, relentless, pseudo relentless, but that usually I use at times when all I have are guys that don't have relentless built in on the table. Mm-hmm. Like if it's only like the flux bray and the vandal going in, I'll use that. But if it's if I'm going to be having the uh, uh, blind guy, the mangler, mangler yeah. go in. Oh, he has relentless build in. No, the the vandal has relentless build in. Who am I thinking of? Uh, the mangler has the gore horn doesn't. For sure, the gore horn doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it's the gore horn, not the not the vandal. Yeah, the gore horn is the the one that yeah. I like to have the rerolls on him just in case. Can fight twice as well. Yeah. And if you're running a lot of people, if you're got a lot of frenzied goats that are going to be going in, you might as well run it because just get try to get those hits, and especially if. Your crit fishing to to parry out a crit that somebody might have. Yeah. Do you have any uh, operatives that you swap out, or do you always take all ten specialists? I always take all ten specialists. Keeps it simpler. I keep How it, was it? Keeps it simpler. Upward on. <laughs> so uh, I keep the the ten specialists not because it's simpler, but the warrior really doesn't add much. Yeah. Uh, because unless you just want another pistol and you'd want to drop the flux spray or something. Or the, like uh, another instance of brutal against the uh, the shield dudes yeah. exaction. Yeah, but I didn't go up against like, any exaction, so that would that would have uh, that would have changed things, but such as this tournament. Uh, the only things that I swap out is occasionally with the leader going with either chain sword chain chained tainted to chain sword or tainted pistol and or uh, the uh, bludgeon and uh, bludgeon and plasma pistol. <laughs> Given that I went against uh, Hyrotech three times this weekend, the plasma pistol got a lot of use. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on. Yep. Good luck at your future games. Well, thank you. I'm hoping to get top five at least. That's my that's my stretch goal for the weekend. That's a good goal. I made my goal: win a pod, make top eight. So I'm good for the weekend. <laughs> yes, I was shooting for. What did I decide? Like seven out of eleven games, and I'm there already. So I'm, I'm free to lose my last two. We'll see. Right on. <laughs> All right. Great talking to you, Jason. Yep. Thank you. Yep. The next conversation is with Shane, right before the final round that he ultimately will end up taking. Here's our conversation. You're, this is right before the final round. You're up for the final contender. Is Shane here for Command Point? He's playing the higher tech circle. Yeah. You put his money where his mouth is. He's done it a few times. The nano mine is absolutely bonkers. Yes, it is. It is. It is really good. Uh, higher attack uh, is. It feels really great. I kind of had to get this tournament like out of my system. At this point, win or lose in the finals, I think I've made my point. Yeah. <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. Yep. Um, I my only loss this week so far was in pods against JD, who I just beat in the semifinals. Nice. So um, I got to get the revenge game. He was awesome to play. Uh, and now I'm playing either Leander, I think, or Adrian, right? Yeah. Uh, Adrian's playing Felgor, and Leander's playing Vetgard. Yeah. Um, both of those seem pretty approachable with the nano mine. So it's capture is going to be the final, so I, I am rooting a little more for Leander. I'd rather play Vetgard on capture than Felgor, but I haven't lost to Felgor's before, although I feel like capture is, like, pushing my luck a little bit. Capture is just it's a hard. If you've got less than 10 models, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, so that'll be tough if it's if it's Adrian, but again, I don't know how much experience these guys have against higher tech. That's helped me throughout the tournament. I, not a lot of people have reps into them. Yeah. Um, so that is that is a part of it. But the team feels so strong. Um, I felt really in control the two games today, 
Um, whereas yesterday, I think against Ryan, for instance, uh, my uh, command point Ryan, he kind of had me on the ropes, and I think I was lucky to win that game, um, which was that guard on Into the Dark. So I don't know. But Ryan's a little more familiar with my, my, my crap with higher yeah. attack, so I don't know. Oh man, very exciting times. I've uh, I've been I'm kind of in a similar boat. Um, I only lost one game against Leander, and otherwise I have all wins, like not even any ties. Just these like all in cursors, all engaged, yeah. running away with it um, in the second pod. Yeah. But uh, I feel like that's another it's another example of like yeah I made my point. It's valid. Yeah. Uh, it's it's been surprisingly cool, surprisingly fun. Uh, the game I had against Leander was absolutely insane. Uh-huh. It, uh, I was I was next to you at that game. Yeah, I, I, so I saw a lot of models getting picked it up. Was, and it was that was like turn one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like totally bonkers. Yeah, so we've got just a couple minutes until we find out what the next round is, and we'll hear more when it's all done. Yeah, I'm hoping I get the win. Uh, if not, though, it's been an awesome tournament. I'm really happy to be here, and whoever I would lose to hypothetically uh, seems like a cool guy. So yes. I'm, I'm happy with either of them. Best of luck. Thank you. The final game Shane The final game Shane played against Adrian Martin, who was playing Felgor Ravagers on an open board on capture. Uh looked like a pretty tight game, and Shane took it in the end for the golden ticket. Once that was over, I made sure to connect with the rest of my teammates that we didn't have an opportunity to record for a, a final touch from Daloon Lads. All right, well, the event is over, and I'm here with my friend Will, who played Legionary. He made top 16. It's true. We, uh, true. yeah, uh, how did it, how did it feel? Um, I mean, how I performed, I feel like I, I'm going to say I underperformed. I feel like I underperformed. I'm not entirely happy with how I did. Lost the last game by one point. I should have won that. It was mine to lose. Yeah. How'd you feel about the terrain? The terrain, I played, I think, five games on Into the Dark. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, I think I only played two open games, something like that. It was a lot of Into the Dark, and that's, I think, just due to randomness. So, I don't, I mean, the open boards I played on were fine, I thought. I did not play the Dreaded X. You didn't play the Dreaded X? Did you get, like, those TPT-looking ones? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. To me, TPT is Twin Cities Public Television. Twin Cities Public that's Television, public maps. Station, so that's what TPT means to me. Um, did you have any uh, fresh rules or uh, crazy stuff like that that you learned? Um, let's see. I learned one of the changes to Wormblade is that their gunners are no longer heavy. What else did I learn? Um, I learned that the... And the Archon Sniper has two mortal wounds. Had I realized that, I would not have let a Legionary eat a shot from him. Yep. It was loud. As you can hear, they're taking things down. It was louder before. I just missed some things. Uh, I mean, but you made the the top 16 pod. That's true. It's That's the, uh, it's the proper competition up there. Oh, they're calling us for prizes. That's a lot of boxes. Did you say we're doing prizes right now? I mean, that's what he said, yeah. We'll see you. This interview is over. We'll see you later. And we close it up with a quick message from Micah. Well, it's all over, and now I'm over here. We, uh, the main loon lad that we didn't touch base with here is Micah. Howdy, howdy. You, you, uh, went 3-0 in your pod, huh? Uh, today, yes. What's Uh, the big takeaway? Blooded or fun. Uh... Focus on killing, and no, let nobody ever tell you it's called points team. Just murder. That's true. Follow your heart. Exactly. Uh, and, and bring the cheese. I heard the way you were playing <laughs> that guy, are, are, uh, Blooded. Whew, I heard the way you were playing Blooded was extra cheesy. Yes, yes. I, I use uh, <laughs> cheese tokens to represent my uh, Blooded or Gaze of the Gods, and it works out great. Everyone loves it. Because they're all Skaven models. Yes, they are. And... Uh, Almost all my opponents were cool and said, heck yeah, let's play with the fun kit bash. So get creative, make something fun, and people will love playing against it. Have a hoot. Did you have any secret weapons that you came across or uh, new rules you learned? Well, I learned uh, some uh, some tricks on Into the Dark about how to place your barricades to prevent your opponent from scoring turn one. And uh, that 
uh, central secure center lines even harder in, on Into the Dark because hugging a wall doesn't count. You got to be literally on the line in one of those uh, in one of those open rooms that the center line passes through. So it's real tricky. It is. Mm-hmm. What was your craziest match? Oh, I got to give a shout out to Francesc. My final match of the GT. He was also my final opponent of the pods, and we were playing the exact same Into the Dark map. He was playing Chaos Cults. Last time he beat me, he taught me a few cool tricks. I was able to make use of them this time and barely squeak out a win. Very close, very hectic game. It was beautiful. So now you're one and one with your with your rival, Francesc. <laughs> yes, sure, rival. <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, run into him again and then you'll break the tie. <laughs> Here's hoping. Any other uh, final comments you want to throw in? Have fun. Go out. Get to uh, get to tournaments around you. Even if you don't win, still have a good time. Absolutely. Well, thanks for listening, and thank you for listening until the end. Remember to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one. 